All right, welcome back, friends. Uh, it's another beautiful, typical early April day up here in the Pacific Northwest. It's been raining and it's overcast. And uh, just a few minutes ago when I was checking, none of my GPS devices were working, which is a really good reminder of why we should be proficient when we're moving out uh, through the wilderness of how to use a compass. Now, I'll start off by telling you that there are a couple different types of compasses out there. There are base plate compasses and lazada compasses. Uh, in this particular video, I'll be uh, describing what it is and how to use a lensatic compass. The one I have here is a military issued lensatic compass. So start off, what is a compass? So a compass is a precision instrument and I'm going to stop that definition right there uh, because that's probably the top thing uh, I've seen people do wrong when they're out moving through the wilderness is they don't trust their precision instrument that they have in their hand. They'll shoot an azimuth, they'll start moving, get out 100, 200 meters, stop, look down at their compass and not trust what their compass is telling them, move back to where they started from and start the process all over again. And that wastes time and more importantly that wastes energy and effort uh, and resources that you're using. So a compass, uh, carrying on from that definition, it's a precision instrument, right? And it ha tells us which direction magnetic north is and it gives us the ability to determine degrees of change or difference from that. Typically, uh, it's going to be described in mils or degrees. So let's move on from there and we'll go over all the different parts. Alright, so moving on, uh, we have our compass here. It's a military issued lens attic compass. Uh, you'll notice I uh, had a lanyard. I strongly encourage always 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 make sure that this compass is attached to your person here I have a thumb ring and I'll show you how to use that here in a minute uh, if I turn over I have the top plate top plate here as well as the base plate and that just swivels on a hinge if I turn my compass over you'll notice uh, this marking here, the model 3H uh, Kamanga, that 3H signifies that all my illuminating lines are tritium as opposed to phosphorus. If I turn my compass over, you'll see the scale I have. It reads from 0 all the way out to 6,000, and that's a scale that's accurate on a 1 to 50,000 map, and it'll allow you to accurately read measurements all the way to 6,000 meters. On my top plate itself, I have a siding wire here, and then I have a tritium line on the top and a tritium line on the bottom. Excellent use for low light conditions. Moving back to my base plate, I have a siding mirror. Siding mirror, that's not a mirror, it's a siding glass. Uh, as well as a, a notch in the line which will be used for my siding wire. And I'll show you how to use that here in a minute. It also has a magnifying glass here which will allow you to read your dial. So on the base plate, uh, you see I do have a floating dial. You see how it kind of turns in every direction there. Uh, so this compass, uh, in all good compasses, are sealed, uh, which protects it from the environment in different altitudes. So this top uh, black ring you see here is called a bezel ring, and it will turn all the way around. I'll show you why that's important. I'm going to turn this back to uh, reset it here so it's in line with the bl fixed black line. Uh, so each click is three degrees. Every time you hear it click, hear it or feel it click, it's moving three degrees. Down in here uh, on, on, the, on the plate itself, of course I have my north seeking arrow which has a tritium line and then my east and my west are marked and underneath those you also have tritium lines as well again useful for uh, low light conditions on the dial you'll notice I have numbers in black and numbers in red my numbers in black are mills we're typically not going to use those for land nav and then my numbers in red are degrees and that's what we're going to be focusing on uh, as we're doing land navigation and orienteering Alright, so another thing I want to tell you before uh, we move on to something different here is that north seeking arrow, of course, it's always going to point towards uh, magnetic north. And if you get anything that's metal around your compass, it's going to mess you up, uh, as you can see here. Right. So I just got my knife here and my north seeking arrow is going to follow that knife all the way around. 
and so you want to make sure that you don't have any large metal objects on your person or near the compass uh, make sure that you're uh, looking at magnetic north that it's going to always find magnetic north all right so let's get into uh how to use this compass all right, so now that we uh, just went over all the components of the compass, I'll show you how to use this thing. And there are two primary methods. The first method is compass to cheek method, and the second method is a center hold method. So for a compass to cheek method, I'm going to take my top plate and I'm going to rotate it back, trying to close it here, and I'm going to set it right till it's on top of uh, my sight glass. And I'm going to take my thumb through the thumb loop, and then I'm going to bring the compass up to, up to my eye. And I'm going to look through the sight glass and the sight wire until I can find the azimuth that I'm looking for. And I, all I have to do is look back down on my red dial. And when I look through uh, my sight glass, I'm looking on the black fixed line that never moves uh, on my base plate and find my azimuth. If I'm going to use a center hold method, I'm going to take my base plate and I'm going to open it all the way up until it locks out. I'm going to take my thumb, put it through the thumb loop, and take both hands uh, for security here, and I'm going to bring it right up towards my torso, again, making sure I don't have any metal objects on my chest or on the front of my body. And let's just say I was trying to find uh, 120 degrees. I'm going to rotate my body until I have a, 120 degrees is directly underneath my black fixed line. Once I have that set, I can take my bezel ring and I can rotate it until the illuminating line on my bezel ring and the illuminating line on my north seeking arrow are perfectly in line. And then that way, as I start moving towards my objective, if I start to drift left or drift, drift right, I can always just look up at my, or look down at my compass. And if those lines are in place, I know that I'm good. If they start to drift left or drift right, my north seeking arrow, because it's always pointing north, that's gonna tell me uh, that I'm not moving in the right direction. So that's how you're going to preset a compass. Let's take a closer look at how each one of those looks like. All right, so now I'll show you how to do each method as it's going to look from your own perspective. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use this pole right out here directly in front of me. For the compass to cheek method, I'm just going to bring the compass up to my eye and I'm going to line that pole uh, with on that siding wire and that notch stake. And then I can look down and read what the azimuth is on my compass and then I can preset it and I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. For the compass to cheek, or as you were, <laughs> compass to cheek, we just did that one. So for the center hole method, I'm just going to bring the compass up to, the, up to my torso and I'm going to shift left or twist right until that pole, until this black line on my bezel ring that doesn't move is in line with that pole. And then to preset my compass, I just turn my bezel ring until the illuminating line on my bezel ring and the illuminating line on my north seeking arrow are in line. Now once I start moving, as I said before, I can move and all I have to do is just take a glance down and make sure that those lines are together. If I start moving, and I look up and I see that all of a sudden my lines aren't lined up anymore, I know I'm moving in a different azimuth. So I just reorient myself, uh, wait till they line back up again, and then start moving again. If they shift off to the other direction, it's too easy. Just rotate back until they're in line, and then now we're good to go. All right, so that should give you a pretty good uh, demonstration of how to use a lens added compass, what all the different parts of a uh, lens added compass are, and how you can best use it as you get ready to move out and do some land navigation or orienteering. Uh, if you like the video, please uh, hit that like and subscribe button down below. Uh, feel free to leave a comment if you think I missed anything or if you had any questions about uh, anything that could have been a little bit clearer. Uh, please do so, and then uh, we'll continue on the conversation. Uh, you can check out the playlist uh, for all other land navigation and orienteering videos that we have going on and we'll continue this conversation until then we'll see you